Hello there, and welcome to my course. My name is Ricky, I'm an illustrator, and today I'm going to show you how to create this adorable little penguin, even if you have no drawing experience. Now, you do need a few things before we get started. You need a drawing software. Now the one I use is Photoshop, but you have to pay monthly for Photoshop, so there are a bunch of free programs, which I will list right here. You might want to pause it and write those down. So you'll need the drawing software and you'll also need a some sort of hardware that allows you to draw digitally. So what I use is this stylus and which is also known as a pen, but in digital world it's a stylus. And I use this drawing monitor, which you can see here. It's my little messy area here. So I just draw right on my monitor like that. Now, if you don't have one of these drawing monitors, that's okay. You might have a little pad that's called a bamboo pad. I'll put a picture of it here that allows you just to draw on it and then it goes right to your computer screen. Or you might have a tablet, which would be, I use, I draw on my tablet all the time. I have a little pen here, I have drawing software in here, and it's super easy. So whatever you use to draw is what you use. There's no reason you have to use Photoshop. So if you're ready, let's do this. All right. So this is our little guy that we're going to create today. So how do we create this little guy from scratch? You might ask. So the way I break it down is in five steps. Now the first step that we're going to tackle here is reference. So Reference is what you do when you gather inspiration. So what I do when I want to gather inspiration is I'll go on Google. Let's say I want to draw a chimpanzee with bow tie. I'll Google chimpanzee with bow tie cartoon or something like that. And I'll get a bunch of different listings. So I will pick the ones that I like the best and then I will gather them in my program here. Oh, let me move my little guy across. So these are the reference photos that I gathered that I liked. So I first googled some little cute penguin cartoons, which you'll see up here in the corner. And then I also googled a couple of real pictures of penguins. I think it's important to have a real picture of your subject, just because you always want to be able to see for yourself what that animal in this case looks like. You want to have a true reference. Now obviously our little penguin guy isn't a real depiction of a penguin, but we still need to know what a penguin looks like in reality before we can draw it in cartoon land. But these little guys, now these are the features I like. So I'll just tell you what I liked most about these guys. So this guy, so this guy, now I really liked his little face, his little mouth and his little beak. He seems really happy and I like how his his little wings are out and you know being a happy little guy. And he has cute little hair up here and I like that. And his eyes. So I mean I like everything about that penguin. Now this one I liked because I mean he's cute. He's kind of funny looking. He's got this weird little expression. And so I added him to the pile and this guy he's very similar to this first guy. I think it was done by the same artist, but it was just another angle. So different angles are always helpful depending on how you want to draw your, your little character. And this guy was just funny. I like how round he is. He's just, I like him. He's, he made me happy. So that's what reference is. Now one thing to take note of, you want to use reference to inspire you, to create something new inspired by something old. So, and that's the best way you can find your creative expression is by taking what inspires you and turning it into something else that is unique unto you. That is only something that you can make. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just copy. So just keep that in mind. So that is step one, reference. So I'm going to get rid of my little guy here for now. All right, step Two, can you guess what it is? Sketching. Sketching is where we bring our whole idea to life. So 
This is a fun part that is very messy. Don't take it too seriously. You don't want to go for a perfect look just yet. Sketching is meant to be messy. All right, so I'm just gonna take our little buddy. We should name him. I think he needs a name. Hmm. How about Pickle? His name's Pickle. He looks kind of like a pickle. Okay, I'm gonna put Pickle over here. All right, so the brush I'm using, it doesn't matter what brush you use. It really doesn't. I tend to like to use, I'll show you here, it's called a, it's not really called anything, it's just an inking brush. You'll see it's got this nice smooth stream. I like these lines, they're chunky, they're just, they're perfect for drawing cartoons. But you don't have to use the brush I use. If there's a brush you want to use, then use that brush. You don't have to do what other artists do, I must stress that. Okay, now, beginning with the sketch. The most important thing to keep in mind when you're sketching, keep it loose. Again, you're not trying to get a perfect drawing right now. So when you're beginning, you want to think in as big of shapes as you can. Now, when we're looking at our guy here, he's pretty round, right? He's, he consists of a circle up here, a weird circle, and a circle here. He's got kind of big floppy wings, like he's got this kind of pudgy look to him. So he's mostly a circular shape. So we're going to start with his head. Now a head is always, what? Circular, right? So we're going to start with a circle. Circles are very difficult to do, the perfect circle. I spend a lot of time and I still can't get a perfect circle on the first try. It takes me, oh, if you're wondering what I'm doing here with the going back, I'm drawing and then erasing. If you are using Photoshop on a desktop version, then control Z after you've done something removes it. So it's just like going back. It's like immediately erasing it. So I do this and then control Z. Do this, control Z. If you're on a tablet like this, it is two fingers tap to go back. So back to here, we'll get our circle. I'm not gonna get a perfect circle guys. I'm sorry. I'm just, that's all, no, that's okay. I guess, still don't like it. Cause we're gonna be here all day if I try to do this. Oh, that was okay. We're gonna we're gonna stick with this one. And then, what you want to do with a face is you want to divide it up, because faces are even, right? You've got two eyes right here, your two nostrils, your lips, your cheeks, your ears. Everything's very even. So you want to make sure you're getting that in your drawing, or else you'll end up with like an eye up here, an eye down here, maybe your nose over here, your lips. It just doesn't look right unless that's what you're going for. I hate to tell you what your style should be, but if you want your face to be semi-accurate, you're gonna do this. You're gonna draw, because our face with this guy is straight on. So we're gonna draw a line straight down, just that easy. So this is the middle line dividing your face because we're looking straight on. So now we're gonna do the eye line, which as you can guess is straight across like this. So I like to do my eye lines a little curved like that because I like my eyes to be a bit more angled, I guess. But you can do a line that's straight across just so long as you know where that eye line is. And now we want to build the face. So this isn't the whole face. Your face isn't perfectly circular. You've got your jaw that comes down. So we're going to build our little penguin's jaw. So you can see over here I gave him some pretty cute little cheeks. So we're going to do that again. So the way you do that, now there is a very technical method to building a face, and if you want, that's a whole course on its own. If you want that, let me know, and maybe we could put that together. But I'm gonna try to give you the simplest explanation for how to build the face. So you wanna divide it up into three parts. Okay, so we've got our three lines. So now down here, that's our jaw line. That's where our little penguin's jaw is gonna be. So then here, right here. I'm going to do this in red so you can see. So here is our ear line. Now we're going to bring, see how I'm winging it out a bit? Because we're winging out for the cheeks. These are big cartoon puffy cheeks. And then we're going to bring it back in towards this 
bottom jawline. You see how I'm connecting it like that. And then we're going to do the same over here at this line, right here, that's the ear line, or the eye line. And then again, wing it out, get a little bit of a chubby cheek, and then start bringing it back in towards this bottom line. And then you can flesh it out a little like that. Again, don't try to make it too perfect, because we're not, we don't need perfect just yet. All right, so now we have his face. We have his whole face going on here. So penguins don't have ears. If this were a character that had ears, you'd put the ears right here. But penguins, as far as I know, don't have ears. I, you know, I don't even know. Do penguins have ears? They must. I don't see any on this guy. Hey, if you know if penguins have ears, let me know, because I don't know that. So now back to our face. So now we're going to put in... So, it's really up to you what you want to put in next. I like to start with the nose because I like to know where the center of the face is going to be and then I work around from that. So I'm going to add his beak in now. The beak I was inspired by was this guy. So that's kind of what I went off of and I got this beak. So to try to make it as super simple for you guys, it's just an up like this, right at the eye line. So right here. And then we're going to do a little kind of bend in to this line, another bend in to that line. Okay, so that's the top of the beak here, that's this part. Now you see that we've got some lip coming down, so that's his mouth open. Ah. So we're going to do a little, this is a little complicated, this is a little woo! It helps if you make a sound, are you like woo? Woo! Nope, don't like that. Woo! Always try to use these guidelines. They help you break it up so it's not, woo, there we go. Okay, I like that. So then we gotta do another little line for the lining of the beak. I think I'm putting in too many details too soon, but I do that. Even though I say don't do that, I still do that. Okay, so that's his cute little mouth. Now we're gonna put in his eyes. I want you to make whatever eyes you want to make, or whatever beak you want to make. I should have clarified earlier, in fact, here's a clarification. If you don't want to make this penguin, you don't have to. You can make any character you want. I'm just showing you the basic steps, so that when you make your character, you'll kind of know how, and it won't be so frustrating. Alright, here's our big eyes, big saucer eyes. It's a bit of a challenge to get them even. See, I like to have my eyes poking out a little bit from behind the beak. I just think it looks cute. Okay, I think that's good enough. So now I'm going to give him a cute little chin here. And then for eyeballs, or irises, little ones. I know he looks weird, but we're going to get to where he looks like this, I promise. Your drawing is always going to look weird in the beginning, when you're building it. So now let's look at his belly. So he's got his big round belly there. So we like that. So I am going to draw it like this. You see how we've got this line coming like that up here? So we just, that's giving him his belly. So we want to make sure we're doing that on our drawing over here. So we're starting from the neck, come down and around, down and around, down and around. I'm going to make this look a little smoother later, but for now that's all we have to do. And now we're going to do legs. So again, thinking in shapes. His belly was a circle, his legs are circles. This is where your legs go, right? So those are obviously not his legs, but that tells us where we are going to put his legs. And then see, I've got, he's kind of a, a pudgy little penguin, so we're going to make sure we have his little folds here. When you add details like that, like folds in fabric or skin, it gives it a, a, a deeper dimension. It, it pulls you into the drawing a little bit more. So we're going to make sure we do that here. Give him a little cute little butt. I guess it's not his butt. It's his, his little chubby legs. Alright, that's good enough. And then his little feet here. They just kind of whip, whip, whip. I don't like that. Whip, 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 whip. 
Sorry, again, I'm trying to go for perfection. We do not want perfection at this stage. Okay, anyway, now we want to put his wings. So we've got a happy little wing coming up here. So we're gonna wink, and then whew. Again, don't try to be perfect. Now this top part that I'm just drawing in is just, you see how on the top of this wing there's black? So what I'm gonna do later on is this part I'm gonna shade in with black when we paint it. In case you're wondering what that is. And then we have this other wing that just goes down like that, whoop, like that. You can already tell that wing is too big. That will do for now. Nope. Stop it. Okay, and then that's the top part where the black will be. Okay, so is our penguin cute or what? Oh, we forgot his eyebrows. All right, now that we have our sketch, we're going to go over with some line art. And we're gonna make it look like our actual real cartoon penguin. Okay, so now we are moving on to step three, which is line work. So this is where it gets a bit more, you have to be a bit more exact. All right, so I'm just gonna turn off the color layers of our other guy so you can see, oops, there he is. So you see, this is what we're gonna go for now. We're gonna make the line art look a lot smoother and then we'll be able to just color in like a coloring book. It's really just that simple. So we'll go back to our sketch guy. Now on this layer, I'm going to reduce the opacity. See if you see over here, the opacity just means that it's going to re make the layer less visible. So as you see, I'm clicking, I click right on the opacity and drag to the left and then it reduces and you can get rid of it altogether if you want. But I bring it low, let's say 20%. And then I'm going to make a new layer over top of that. And that is going to be our line work layer. I have a black inking pen and we're just going to go over the lines that we want to bring out. So we have a lot of sketchy lines here. We don't want all of those lines, but now we have like a, a model that we can use to make more definition and detail within our penguin. It can be very tricky to get smooth lines and it takes a lot of practice. So don't get discouraged if your lines don't look very smooth. Mine oftentimes don't look very smooth. I use, when I'm doing a professional drawing, I use different tools that allow me to get this kind of smooth line look and I'm not using them right now because I don't think, I think that's an advanced kind of course. So for now, we're just gonna trace over This guy's a little chubbier than our last one. And take your time. If, if you want to take more time with this, pause this video. Do what you need to do. And don't let anyone rush you. I like to take my time. Then we'll do his beak up here. And woo woo. That's kind of fun. It's got a little bit of a stylized little look there. So if... If you don't follow your line art exactly, that's fine too. You might find some new little things that you want to do that you didn't see before. So don't think that because you have lines means you have to follow them. Your drawing is always going to change. Mm. Mm. Nope. I tell ya, circles in me. Me in circles. Back here, little pupil. All right, I'm gonna give him his little eyebrows. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. So this is where you wanna get a bit more, not perfect, but you just want your lines to be more thought out. And there's a little chin. And I'm gonna go woo. That works. And then we're gonna do his little cute little chubby legs. Whee. 
There. And then his little feet. works and then we'll go over to his wing again if you have to do this over and over again that is okay there is no time limit on good art and I'll have this little thing this little lip over top his wing no, I want this one like that Okay. Oh, and I want to give him a little cute hairs. I don't know if penguins have hair on the top of their head, but I think it looks cute. And then we'll have these markings. You're gonna practice your lines again and again and again. It's what will make you a good artist. And loop. Nope. Yeah, that works. Oh, in his belly. He needs markings on his belly. Whoopsie. You want to go like that. All right. So, now we have our little sketch here. I'm going to turn off our old sketch on the layer. And we can see our little guy. Not bad, not bad. Now, bonus tip. If you're using a program like Photoshop or Procreate, or those are the only ones I've used, but I think they all have this feature. It's called Liquify. So on Photoshop, if you go up to Filter, and then Liquify, and in Procreate, I think it's just at the top under that arrow button and then a Liquify feature on there. It works the exact same way. So what you do with Liquify is it just allows you to move your drawing around a little bit. So you see, I've got my brush here, I'm making it bigger. And I click here and drag and see that's moving his belly. So I can move him around a little bit if I don't quite like his shape. So this is a really nice feature to be able to do with digital drawings because you don't want to have to keep redrawing it if you don't like it. And this is a really nice time-saving tip. So there isn't a whole lot I want to change on him. I think he could be a little wider, maybe his legs a little wider there. Uh, he could move his wing around a bit. But I think he's pretty cute overall. I like his little mouth. Maybe you could bring his jaw down, but yeah, no, that's good. So I'm going to leave him there. Oh, and this preview button, we can turn it on and off. You can see what we did. Okay, so that's him. So now we're going to move on to step number four, which is base coloring. So this is where we start to get really fun and wild with color. Now, whatever colors you choose are up to you. I'm going to stick with the traditional colors of a penguin today, just because... I'm a boring adult and you're a fun kid, so you get to have fun with the colors. I want to show you what I did. This is a base color. A base color layer is just one single tone color for each section of your drawing. So if I make my big, my other penguin big again, you can see that it's one solid gray color for his belly, one solid grayish black color for everything else. We've got one yellow color, one red color, just one color for each section. In the next stage, we're gonna do something else with those colors, but for base color only, you just want one color per section. We wanna keep it simple. Okay, so I'm on my line work layer right here. Now I'm gonna make another layer, and I'm gonna put that layer underneath my line work layer, and I'm gonna call it base color. So now I'm on my base color layer. I'm gonna go back to my brush tool and again here you pick whatever brush you want. 
I'm going to stick with a simple hard round brush up here. That's just a simple kind of circle like that. Now I'm just going to, so I'm going to color pick some colors from my old penguin. In order to color pick, what that is, is if, let's say I like this blue over here and I want that in my brush, I will on my desktop hold Alt and then you see I get this little line dropper and then I'll click on that blue color. See? And that circle pops up. That means now over here on the color wheel I have that blue selected so I can paint my guy blue. So I'm just going to color select over here. If you're on a tablet, I believe on most of the programs all you have to do is hold your finger on the color and then it will pick that color up into your brush. But I've only used two drawing programs, so I don't know about all of them. But they're, they're all pretty much the same. All right, on to coloring. So we're going to just go over to our old guy, do Alt, and you see we got our eyedropper, and I'm going to pick that blackish color. So now I'm going to come in here, and I like to zoom in really close. So I'm just going to go in here and paint all of our parts that are this black and you paint whatever colors you want if you want a purple penguin then you should paint a purple penguin there are no rules in art there are only people who think there should be rules because they don't know how to play outside of them but when you truly understand the purpose of art you see that it isn't for anyone but you. And nobody gets to tell you how to make art. It took me a long time to figure that out. And so I hope that you little budding artists out there will never allow you, will never allow anyone to tell you what you should and shouldn't create. Oops, I went outside the lines. Oops, I did it again. But it's okay because we're not using real paint. That's what I love about digital art. It's just so clean and easy. There's no fuss or muss. It's just drawing with pixels. It opens your imagination up to so many possibilities. And if you go outside of these lines, no big deal. I don't know why I'm drawing in them. I guess because I'm the teacher and I'm supposed to set the baseline example. So I'm showing you how to draw an average penguin. But I don't want you to draw an average penguin. I want you to draw a penguin that only you can draw. I'd love to see what you guys create. If you can send your little characters in, that would be amazing. If you created this penguin or if you've made another one or your own character, I'd love to see it and I'd love to hear how you came to the idea if you made an original character. There's always a story behind every single piece of art. So as you can see, this base coloring takes the longest. Now I know that for some of you advanced users out there, there is a quicker way to do this with the paint bucket tool, but I realized that my lines weren't close enough. If your lines aren't close enough together, then you can't use the paint bucket tool. I could have just fixed that, but it's fun to color together, isn't it? I think it's fun. So we're just going to take the long way around. If you're using the paint bucket tool, awesome. You can just skip ahead and we'll, you can skip ahead to the next step and then we will do the final step of the highlights and the shadows. That is my favorite phase because that's when everything just kind of comes together and your drawing can be seen as you wanted it to be seen. And it's just, 
complete. If you guys want more courses like this, or if you if you have any ideas for what kind of course would be fun, what you want me to draw, what you want to learn, just let me know. Let us know. We're always looking for new ideas. And we're very interested to hear what you have to say. Okay, that's it. We have our base coloring. So now we're going to move on to the last and final step, highlighting and shadowing. This is my favorite because this is when you get to add the, the depth into your character. This is when you get to kind of bring them alive, I guess. All right, so I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to right click on it. And you see this thing called create clipping mask. What that does is it clips that layer onto your bottom layer so that you can't draw outside of it. I'll show you for an example here. So this layer is not clipped. And I'm going to brush and I'm just going to brush on our canvas like that. Okay, that's just your regular layer. Now if I right click on it and I do create clipping mask, look, it snaps to our layer. So now I can draw and it won't go outside of our little penguin guy. So I like to do this when I'm doing highlights and shadows because then they stay on my penguin and I don't have to be very accurate. I can just, I can, I can, I can grab a big brush and I can just start doing my highlights and shadows. Now there are many different ways to do highlights and shadows, but we don't have time to go over all of them. So I'm going to go over just a very simple way to add highlights and shadows into your drawing. So we're on our highlights and shadows layer. Now I'm going to go over to our penguin. Oh, what I should do is show you first how it's going to look. So in our example over here, I'll show you that when we add our shadows layer, things, certain spots get a little darker. You see that? On and off. See how he's got a little shadow under his neck and his wing? This is very basic. You can go much more in depth than this, but just for the purposes of showing you how to highlight and shadow, this is what I did. And then our highlights layer, which just makes certain areas a little brighter. So that adds, you can see now with those two layers as compared to this guy, this guy over here as compared to this guy, they're very different. This one br comes out at you a bit more while this one's a bit more flat. So we're going to do that same thing to our new penguin, Pickle. Alright, so here's our penguin. We've got our clipping mask layer on. Now I'm going to use the alt and I'm going to color pick this blackish gray here. And so now you see over here on the color wheel, or the color square I guess, it's selected this kind of grayish black. So we're going to do our darker tones first. So in that case, to go darker than that shade we have to go all the way to black. So I've dragged this all the way to black. Now our color is just pure black. See that? Pure black. So the brush I'm using, again, my choice, you pick whatever brush you want. The brush I'm using is just this soft round pressure brush. It's very light. See, you can work up pressure if you have a pen. And I just really like it for highlights and shading, but that's, that's me. So now what I'm going to do with this color is I'm going to go over all of the parts on this black color that I think need to be darkened a bit. So under his neck, and you can always erase too if you get into the wrong shade. So under his neck is going to need some shadow. So there's always shadow under that crevice there. And then I'm just going to put some more over here on this side of his head, just to because I'm going to bring the light to be more on top of him. 
and around his wing here, around his tummy. There's really not a lot of highlighting and shadowing that we need to do on this guy. So now I'm going to color pick this gray. And then on the color chart, we're going to bring it down just a little bit. We don't want to go all the way down. We want to kind of stay within, I'd say, a little range of that initial color. So now we've got a darker color of the gray. We're going to do shadows there. So you see that? Do it under his chin. There's wing here. There would be a little lip, a little crevice. Shadow that up a bit. Under here. So you can spend a lot of time on this making it perfect. Sometimes I spend 10 hours on a painting. This is just a very quick simple explanation for how to do this. You need to take it and run with it. Okay, I'm gonna color pick that again and this time I'm gonna go... Oh, we didn't do the orange, sorry. So I'll color pick the orange and go a little darker right straight down. I tend to like to go on an angle like this if I can. So we're gonna do, go to a this color right here and then do the same thing. You always want your shadows to have a little bit of color in them if you're shadowing color. Okay, now we're gonna go for, oh, the tongue. We forgot the tongue. Put a little shadow in there. And I'm gonna put a little under his, and just erase this after. See, if you need to do a wide area, then you can just erase the parts you don't want it in after. There's so many things you can do drawing digitally. Okay, now we're going to do highlights. So we'll select that gray up here. So we're going all the way up to the white. And then I'm just going to start coming in. There would be a little under the eyes. A little on the cheeks. Cheekies, little chin. Uh, I'll just put some white on top of his beard there. And then to make the eyes shine a little bit, I do a little circle. Oh, we gotta go on top of the line work layer. Little circle of white right here. And that makes his eyes look like they're shining. Okay, then over here on the yellow, we'll make that a little lighter as well. Mm. And then here on his legs, all the way up to white, we're just going to put it on the folds a little bit just to exaggerate them. And I want to give him a nice white belly. That really shines. So you see how it looks like now his belly is coming at us? That is the that is what shading does. Highlighting and shading. It makes it look more real. I like to put a little on his cheeks there here just to that's what I like to do you don't have to do that I like to do this okay I'm gonna do a little bit more shadow here under his legs under his little belly okay I would say that about does it and then you can just to make him look a little better you can put a solid background here I went with blue because I like blue that in the background and separates them from the back and then you can see see I missed some some coloring in his eye so I'll go back to my base color layer and I'll just put in that white eye goodness and that about covers it that is our penguin so that's it that's how you draw a basic cartoon penguin so I hope you liked that. If you did, please leave me some comments or share with me your drawings that you did because of this and I would love to see them, to see what you guys came up with. Thank you again for joining me. I really hope you enjoyed our little penguin and I hope to see you next time. Bye!